All right, gang. So this is our last stop with aromaticity and benzene. So basically, I want to touch on a little bit of discussion with EWGs, EDGs, orthopara meta directors. I kind of want to give some labels as far as activating groups and deactivating groups. Just basically what we've discussed before, just a little twist. Then I want to do three complete the reaction problems and then one comprehensive synthesis problem and we are done. We're going to call it a day and we'll close the book on this unit. Okay, so we discussed with EWGs, aka meta directors, th these are those very positive or partial positive atoms directly attached to your benzene ring, like the nitrogen in a nitro group or the sulfur in a sulfonyl group, the list goes on. So because we saw in the resonance that they actually put positive charges on a benzene ring, right, on the two ortho and one uh, para position, these groups actually deactivate the ring. If you have some type of meta director on your benzene ring, like say a nitro group, putting an additional group on is not exactly as favorable as if you had an electron donating group. And these groups, like they said, they withdraw electrons out of the ring, they deactivate the ring, subsequent reactions are slower and more unfavorable than if you have these groups. I'll tell you why I'm saying this in a minute. Now, if we're going to look at electron donating groups, we saw, if I were to draw just an example, our classic methoxybenzene, you know, we have partial oh, negative charges at the two ortho positions and the one para position. These actually activate the ring. Right? And it makes sense because we're putting positive things on our benzene ring, so the reactions happen more quickly, they're more favorable. Here's kind of the exception. So while we see with a benzene ring with, say, a chlorine on it, or a bromine, or an iodine, well, actually, let's leave him off because we're putting bromine and chlorine on our benzene rings. These halogens are electronegative to the point where they actually even though through resonance they donate electrons to the ring, they actually take electrons out of the ring. They kind of, because of the electronegativity difference, they actually net suck electrons out of the ring. So while they are ortho para directors, that is still a constant, they actually slightly deactivate the ring. So to kind of summarize, every electron withdrawing group is a meta director and they deactivate the ring because they are sucking electrons out of the benzene ring. All electron donating groups are para directors. They activate the ring. They make reactions happen more favorably and quickly, except for the halogens. And you'll see what I mean. Let's do a problem to kind of illustrate what I'm saying. Always better to do some examples. Erase this real quick. Okay. So let's take a look at an example. Let me look at my cheat sheet real quick. Okay. So. If I were to draw for you guys this reaction, right? I'm going to put an O methyl over here and a chlorine down here. And let's just say the type of reaction we were trying to do is we are trying to put a nitro group on the ring with a little nitric acid, a little catalytic sulfuric acid. Okay, so it was easy with one group, one directing group, right? We just identified what it was, and then you know if we need to consider sterics then we would just say, oh, we're either going to put this, you know, in the ortho, the meta, or the pair positions, right? Okay, now we have competing groups. So here's what you kind of have to do. You need to look at both groups, identify them as, you know, ortho para directors or meta directors, and then you kind of need to see which one activates the ring the most. Whoever's the most strong, whoever's the stronger activating group, they're going to dictate where whatever group you're going to put on, they're going to dictate where it goes. Okay, so we know this O-methyl, we're looking at the atom directly attached to the ring. You know, he's electronegative, has electrons to give, to donate to the ring. He's an ortho para director. And, you know, he's an activating group. Okay, now let's look at this chlorine. Like we just discussed, while he is an ortho para director, we just discussed that because of the electronegativity of halogens, they actually slightly deactivate the ring. So this ohm methyl is going to be the one that dictates where this, nit this nitro group goes. So we know he's an ortho para director, right? Well, para to this O methyl, 
one, two, three, four. The, the pair of position is taken. So we're going to follow the O-methyl and we're going to make sure that this group goes ortho, right? It doesn't matter if I put them here or there, they're equivalent positions. So the product we would expect is O-methyl stays there, chlorine stays there. I'm just going, oh, I'll make them look a little neater. I'm going to stick the nitro group right there. So you see how that works? If you have multiple groups on a ring, just kind of make sure you can identify what type of directors they are, and then who's going to dominate who, like the, the, the directing of the subsequent group you're going to put on. Okay, let's do another example. Erase this super quick. Okie doke. All right, so let's just say I gave you something like this. You might see a problem like this on one of your exams. So a little strange, but we see we have two benzene rings here. And we're going to reason through this together. So we're just trying to do a little bromination, all right? Here's my thought process. You're only going to put a bromine on one of these benzene rings. So we see we cut, let's look at one benzene ring at a time and kind of identify what directed groups we're working with. So let's kind of cover this benzene ring up. So directly off the far right benzene ring, you can see we have an electron donating group, right? Electronegative atom with electrons to give. He's an ortho pair director and he's activating, right? Activating. Okay, let's cover him up. Okay, so directly off this benzene ring, you can see we have a partially positive carbonyl, right? Looks like we have a meta director and we know that meta directors are deactivating. So here's the thought process. Because this ring is deactivated, this ring is more reactive and he's going to kind of receive the bromine. Make sense? Okay, so we're going to kind of forget about this side. We're only, only interested on this side. So, again, now we realize we have an ortho para director. So now we need to figure out, does bromine go here or here? Or does bromine go where the asterisk is? Well, clearly this is a massive bulky group. And bromine isn't exactly small. So I'm saying bromine will 100% go para. So I'll draw my ring with bromine in the para position. And then I'll fill in the rest of what I started out with. Here's my oxygen. There's the rest of that ester. See how that makes sense? So if you have more than one ring, usually someone's trying to trip you up by saying, oh, one of these rings is, you know, reactive and activated, or the, and the other one is deactivated. Okay, let me clean this up, and then we'll do one more complete the, act, complete the reaction problem, and then we'll do a very comprehensive synthesis problem. So we've done a few problems that have been exploring, you know, activating groups and deactivating groups, whether they are ortho, para, or meta directors. So just to formally go over this with you guys, I just want to make sure we talk about this together because if I if this is not on any exam you take regarding benzene and aromaticity, I would be shocked. Okay, so let's look at something like this. Let's just say someone gave you a benzene ring and they give you this alkyl chloride and some AlCl3 and you're supposed to predict the product. Okay, so here's how I usually go about this. So we know that this is a Friedel-Crafts alkylation, right? And we know that Friedel-Crafts alkylations are subject to, you know, methyl shifts and carbocation hydride shifts, right? So what I usually do, based on the mechanism we know, is that we're always going to, you know, have this chlorine leave and you form that carbocation where the chlorine pieces out. So from there, you always have to, so I would always draw that carbocation. Then you have to ask yourself, can I have some type of shift? And as we can clearly see, the answer is yes, because if I draw this hydrogen right there, we can absolutely throw this hydride, uh, this hydride right over there and have him shift over, which would make our ion to put on the benzene ring the tertiary carbocation right there. Then you can go ahead and attach straight off to a ring. Right, I'm going to draw one line like that. That is going to be right here, that dot carbon right there. So I'll draw my two methyl groups off of that dot carbon and then two carbons off of that. So just please be careful. I guarantee someone's going to have either a hydride shift or a methyl shift with some Friedel-Crafts alkylation, 
at some point on some exam you're going to take. It's not a terribly hard concept to you know internalize and remember, and I don't want you guys to miss these easy points. Okay, so let's do one more problem. It's going to be a synthesis problem that I think really exhibits a lot of the uh, the helper um, reactions we used in the the last video, as well as I think it just kind of is a high level synthesis problem for this type of uh, for this material. But I don't think it's anything you guys can't handle. Okay, so in my mind. The key to these problems are to realize the relationships you see in the product and how you kind of have to manipulate the, you know, what you start out with to achieve this. So you can see in this final product over here, right, we have two, uh, two groups that are ortho to each other. So whenever I see that and there's no group para, in my mind at some point, that means we're probably going to have to use a, that sulfonyl blocking group to force something to go ortho, right? Because we know sterically, if something can go uh, para to another uh, group, it's going to do that. Okay, so I've always been a big advocate of going from the end to the beginning in most all synthesis problems. I would say that these electro aromatic, electrophilic aromatic substitution synthesis problems, I'd say this is kind of the exception because there's less steps involved, everything's happening in one place, you just kind of have to do them in the right order. So I, if you feel comfortable starting at the beginning, I say go for it. So what I want to do is I want to put this nitrogen part on first. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do HNO3, H2SO4. I'm going to stick my nitro group on. Okay, so here's another thing to consider. We want to make sure that this is done in the most efficient way possible, right? That means if we're adding subsequent groups onto our ring, we want to make sure we want to make sure that the ring is activated, right? I don't want to be sticking groups on this ring with a nitro group because remember that's deactivating. It could still happen, but it's just not the most efficient synthesis. So my next move is going to be I'm going to reduce my NA, my NO2, my nitro group. I'm going to reduce him, right? And I can either do that with my H2 PDC or my zinc mercury HCl reaction. So I'm going to then achieve my amine, right? So I'm almost there. If you can stick with me, you can see that all I need to do is put a blocking group on the pair position, do a Friel Krauss acylation, take off my blocking group, and then I'm done. But be careful. Remember, when we put on a sulfonyl group, that means we have to involve some acid. And remember, this NH2, very basic amine, right? So what I'm going to do, just to make some space, remember, we have to acetylate him, right? We have to throw in some acetyl chloride. Because what that does is it makes him slightly less basic, right? While still maintaining his integrity and preference to direct ortho para. So we gotta do that. Now, since he's now he's protected from picking up that proton as the basic amine, now I'm going to do H2SO4, SO3. That is going to give me a benzene ring with my acetyl or my amide right there. And now I have the SO3H down here. I should have said this earlier, but I'm going to say that this is also a piece you can use in your synthesis, this 3-carbon acid chloride. So I'm going to introduce that to the ring. And remember, for a Friedel Krauss acylation, we still need AlCl3. So that's going to give us this right here. We still have the amide. Now, this, or we still have the uh, sulfonyl group down low. And remember, we're going to just stick this group on right at the carbonyl carbon. Okay, so we're almost done, right? All we need to do is get rid of our sulfonyl group and the amide. But remember, we can do that with one step. Remember, all we need to do is if we throw in some acid 
and heat, the acid would just wipe the uh, amide out back to the amine alone, but if we throw in the heat, that gets rid of the sulfonyl group as well. Okay, gang, if you understood those complete the reaction problems, and if you followed this synthesis, you're in pretty good shape. Move on to the worksheet. Do You can now do the last two worksheets. The worksheet with directing groups, completing the reactions, and I have four synthesis problems for you. Make sure you practice the mechanisms. Make sure you understand all the problems on the worksheet. If you guys can do that, then you are really set and good to go with everything aromatics and benzene. All right, when you're all done with this, we're moving on to carbonyls. We're gonna throw it back and we're gonna revisit our good old friends, aldehydes and ketones. Let's do it.